this is probably no way to make a pen blank. Uh, this build is supposed to take about three hours. So we're going to see how this goes. And then we're going to try to turn this into a pen. And maybe we can come up with some different ideas on how to use this technology to make a pen blank. This is going to be a three-quarter inch by three-quarter inch pen blank that's five inches long. It's got a seven millimeter hole down the middle. We're about three minutes into the build at this point in time. We'll come back later. Okay, two hours and 54 minutes left in the build. Uh, I'm using a white filament for this. Supposedly, and I've got to experiment with this a little bit, I could uh, stop the build or pause the build right now. Uh, if you look at the touch panel, there's a stop button and a pause button. And if I pause the build, supposedly I can change the color of the filament. Now I'm doing a vertical build here uh, so this means that I could put uh, different layers in of different colors and there's a lot of different colors available with these filaments so that when I turn that on the lathe I would see these stripes. Uh, the other thing you can do is do this as a build horizontally and put different layers in with different colors. So I've got a little bit of experimenting to do. I still don't think this is going to be a reasonable way to make a pen blank, certainly not an economical way to do it. Uh, but it may be that if you could make a particular shape with this and then encapsulate that in alumilite to make a pen blank, you might be able to get some really uh, interesting uh, designs. So it's something that I've got to play with a little bit. Uh, but right now, uh, I'm just kind of experimenting with this particular type of pen blank and we'll see how it works. Okay, there's two hours and 35 minutes left in this build. Uh, the Dremel uh, 3D printer uses a PLA filament. So that must mean that it's a pretty safe material, at least in my mind. So I'll keep you posted on this build. There's about two hours and 30 minutes left of the build. This is where we are right now. I'm using what's called a PLA filament. And that's what uh, comes with the Dremel. Uh, in all the research I've done, you know, the two filaments that are probably most popular are the uh, ABS and the PLA filament. The PLA filament is a biodegradable filament. Uh, it builds very nicely. I mean, uh, the few objects that I've built are just very detailed, very smooth bills. I uh, haven't had any problems uh, with it adhering to the platform or any kind of distortion uh, due to temperature changes and so on. Um, I don't smell any odors coming from this. Uh, I haven't stuck my nose inside the compartment here to smell the hot filament, but I don't smell anything coming out of the, the, the uh, Dremel 3D printer. Um, it, there, are, there are no printed warnings, uh, however, I've got it on a dining room table with lots of uh, circulation around it, so uh, I don't think there's any chance for any dangerous fumes to build up, and I'm not sure there'd be any with this PLA. PLA is made from uh, biodegradable and sustainable uh, components like cornstarch and sugar cane and uh, things like that, so, uh, you know, when you look at the materials that they use to make it, it it appears to be a very uh, sustainable and what you might call a green material. Now, just in case, I don't have a canary, so I have a cat that I put next to the bill machine. Uh, and actually, the cat sort of picked this location. I really didn't pick it for her. So she's monitoring it for me to see if there's any dangerous fumes coming out of the machine. And uh, this cat would let me know, let me tell you if there was a problem.
Okay, we have an hour and 50 minutes left of the build. Uh, it's going to end up being five inches tall when it's done, so you can kind of see where we are at this point. Nice crisp lines. Uh, I'm not going to try filament change with this build as I stated earlier, but uh, I may try to do one uh, soon where I build it horizontally and try to put some different layers in. Uh, it'll be interesting to see too as it builds horizontally how it handles the hole down the middle. One of the reasons I chose this Dremel 3D printer is because of the reputation that Dremel's got. Uh, they've been around a long, long time, many, many years, and they're owned by Bosch, which is a very reputable company. So in my, when uh, Dremel decided to get into the 3D printing business, uh, I thought this might be a safe uh, bet to purchase one of their machines to try out this 3D printing technology. Uh, in the department where I work at the university, we've opened up a 3D printing lab. And in that lab, students are able to build uh, all sorts of, of widgets and uh, devices. And, and matter of fact, one of the fluids classes, uh, the students go into that lab and build a full-size fan impeller and then come back to the lab, uh, the fluids lab, and install the impeller in the housing for the blower and run tests on it to see if it performs as they predicted with their design. So I think 3D prototyping is going to be a very important uh, field for, for engineers. Now whether this is going to have any application for woodworkers, uh, we're going to have to play that one through. But uh, I've got a couple of ideas that I want to try and uh, see if they work. Okay, there's an hour and 30 minutes left in the build now. And about an hour and 20 minutes now left of the build. And uh, the cats have changed places, so we have a new cat now guarding the 3D printer. Well, there's an hour left. And it's still laying down the filament. You can tell that it follows the outline of the square cross section, fills some of it in, then it draws around the, the circle, the hole that's in the middle, and then it goes back and fills in the material again. So uh, the way they've written the software for this is very good. I've, I've noticed that when it does a fairly large object that uh, it'll make sure that all the exposed surfaces are extremely fine detail. There may be a lot of stitching in the middle, but when it gets down to the, the show face, it really uh, lays down the filament very carefully and gives you an ultra smooth surface. Twenty minutes and counting. Getting close to the end here. The touch screen not only keeps track of the remaining time, but it also keeps track of the time that it logs in for the printing activity and it also gives you the uh, sort of a green bar graph on the percent completion. So you get a little bit of feedback information uh, while it's running. One of the ways they suggest to keep up with uh, the filament is to weigh the remaining filament. And in, I guess in some cases the models actually give you an idea of what weight of filament you'll need to use to produce that. Uh, probably another way of doing it is to look at the operating time, the total accumulated operating time that you've got on a particular roll of filament.
we're down to less than a minute to go here. I'm just going to let the uh, video run while this finishes up. One of the problems I think I'm going to have when I put this on the lathe and try to turn it is that uh, this PLA is supposed to be very brittle. Uh, now I haven't noticed that with any of the pieces that I've made so far, but when I put it on the lathe, I'm going to have to make sure that I use some very sharp tools and kind of watch the turning closely. As I mentioned earlier, I think the ultimate goal here would be to actually provide some kind of a 3D shape that would end up being uh, encapsulated in alumilite, and the alumilite turns very easily. So that that would be the the material that actually be turned into the pin shape, and this bill that uh, would be in the center of the pen would just be an object. It's now finishing up the top. Okay, that's the end of the bell. Just gonna open the door again so you get a little better view of what this looks like on the inside. Uh, the as you can see, the temperature indicator is still hot, so uh, you know it's recommended that you let this cool down before you remove it and uh, separate it from the platform. So I'll come back to you when I'm ready to do that. This is the finished blank. And you can see the hole that's formed through it. Nice seven millimeter hole. Of course, that's adjustable. And it separated very easily from the platform. And I don't know if you can see in the video, but the surface is very, very smooth. Question now is will I be able to turn this on the lathe? So uh, we will be back to that in a little later. Well, I didn't video the turning of this on the lathe. Uh, I don't, there really wasn't anything exciting to see. I, I used a skew, and the skew uh, cut it. Wasn't any problem with that. But the problem is that when this build is made, it basically is uh, stitching, at least that's the term I'm using, uh, as it builds the layers to do the the uh, infill and so you've got a lot of uh, of pattern there that's I guess almost like cross grain but um, when it cuts it'll get to one area where it's really smooth but then if you go through that area you get into the stitching and then it uh, is really really rough and you can see here the the roughness of it. Now, one of the things that I did, which makes it look a little worse for wear, is that I tried to sand it, and I was running it a little bit too fast, and so it actually heated up and it softened the PLA. The PLA gets soft when its temperature gets above a certain level, and uh, that's why you don't want to use it for mugs and things like that. Um, I'm wondering as if I built this instead of vertically, which is what I did in the video. If I built it like this, it would be any better. And I don't think so, because I think what would happen again is that it would, it would outline 
the uh, rectangle and then it would stitch in between and when it stitches it kind of stitches at, at different uh, patterns so it'll go diagonally one way and then diagonally the other way and so I think I'd run into the same problem I think I might have a you know a smooth fairly smooth surface followed by a, a fairly uh, ragged uh, stitching so I don't think this is going to work like this I think the the best thing I could accomplish would be to design um, the interior of a blank that I might uh, make with a Lumilite and I would have the hole that would be cast or not cast but built in the center of the object uh, and the object would be surrounded by a Lumilite which would turn uh, nicely into a, a pin shape. Um, the only problem with that is that you know if I'm using a seven millimeter hole uh, the shape could only be a few millimeters thick or I'd end up uh, not having enough Lumilite to uh, to cover it. Uh, I don't know that for a fact. I need to kind of play with that a little bit. So basically this was a, a failure. Um, so I don't think it's going to make sense to try to make uh, pin blanks out of this pill. PLA and I kind of suspected this was going to happen as I as I made this because you can watch the the pattern of the filament being laid down and you can pretty much tell that uh, it's going to end up giving you a lot of uh, well, I guess what's comparable to in grain cross grain you know just a myriad of uh, fibers there um, however the skew did cut uh, the PLA and it, it looked a lot uh, smoother than it looks now because this is where I tried to sand it and heat it up a little bit. But uh, the, the skew did cut it um, better than anything else I tried. I tried a couple of carbide tip tools. I tried a, uh, a gouge. And uh, the skew was obviously the best way to go. It actually made it round. And as I cut down into it, I could shape it a little bit. But it was just very ragged with all the... The stitching here you can see if you look closely some of the smooth um, pattern right there that would be in the next layer uh, and then of course the layer on top of that was basically the stitching which was very rough so this is going to take some work um, so I hope you enjoy uh, this video uh, I don't know if there's a whole lot to enjoy but I hope you learned something from it I certainly did and uh, look for future videos. I'm going to try some different things with this uh, uh, 3D printer to see if I can integrate it into woodworking effectively. Um, so uh, if you like this, indicate it and uh, subscribe. Uh, and we'll talk to you later. Bye.